hope you're doing well and of course Arnie does too. Now in today's video I will be focusing on the beautiful country of the Philippines. The entire landmass of the Philippines is made up by islands, which makes it the second largest archipelago in the world. Although there is over 100 million people living in the Philippines, there are still some places for wildlife to thrive. The Philippines are home to many endemic plant and animal species, with 194 endemic birds, with one of them being the Philippine Eagle. This critically endangered bird is one of the largest eagles in the world and is the official national bird of the Philippines. There are also many amphibian and reptile species, with one of the standouts being the Philippine crocodile. This species is critically endangered and is considered to be the most threatened crocodilian in the world. It shares its freshwater habitats with over 330 species of fish, of which 65 are endemic species. The Philippines is also home to plenty of endemic mammals, with one of the strangest and most elusive being the Philippine tarsier and the oceans surrounding this archipelago are some of the most biodiverse in the world. These waters are also visited by the largest fish in the world, the whale shark. But just like many other highly populated countries around the world, the Philippines also has some invasive species. I'll be going through just a few of them today, as I'll be going through five invasive species in the Philippines. And for our first species, we'll head up to China, as we have the Chinese softshell turtle. These strange looking turtles can be found in both fresh and brackish water, but tend to be found in places with a slow current, such as ponds, lakes, and canals. In these areas, they are primarily carnivorous, feeding on fish, crustaceans, and insects, as well as seeds and plant material. And on this diet, they can reach a maximum size of around 33 centimeters across the carapace. I have featured this turtle in a previous video, as although it's invasive, it's also listed as vulnerable to extinction. They are extremely rare in the wild in China, and are most commonly found in China's turtle farms. These turtles are used to make turtle soup, and this business is quite lucrative. There are 1,500 registered turtle farms in China, which are thought to sell over 100 million turtles per year. This is based on data obtained from 684 Chinese turtle farms, where they were recorded selling 91 million in turtles a year. This turtle soup industry is why it was introduced into the Philippines, as they were commercially farmed there for a food source. Either these turtles escaped or were deliberately released into the wild, and today they have spread at a surprising rate. It is reported that they can now be found in hundreds of fish ponds, but they can cause damage by competing with native species and also feeding on a native fish and crustaceans. But as they're so threatened in the wild, it's hard for some people to see them as a problem species. But for our next species, we'll head to Central and South America, as we have the guppy. The guppy is an incredibly adaptable species and can be found in almost any habitat imaginable, from high altitude streams to turbid swamps and ditches. They tend to thrive in areas with vegetation and lots of algae growth. In these areas they are primarily insectivorous, feeding on the larvae of many insects. As I'm sure many of you know, guppies are one of the most popular aquarium fish in the world, but the guppies that you see in aquarium stores are far removed from their wild counterparts. The wild fish are generally not as vibrant, with the exception of a few species. As guppies are such popular aquarium fish, you may assume that the guppies in the Philippines are released pets. Surprisingly this is not the case, as they were originally introduced for mosquito control. Guppies do a very good job at controlling mosquitoes, which is very important to the human population as mosquitoes can transmit many diseases. As guppies are live bearers they can breed very quickly. As these guppies are relatively well developed when they're born, they have a higher chance of survival. In the Philippines some experts don't class the guppy as invasive, as they're very good at controlling the mosquito population and have little effect on fish. But in some areas they do compete with the smaller native fish, and as they breed and develop so quickly, it's very hard for the native fish to keep up. So although they're very popular in the aquarium trade, they're not very popular with native fish. But for our next species, we'll head to the temperate areas of Europe and Asia, as we have the Eurasian tree sparrow. This sparrow is widespread in the towns and cities of eastern Asia, but in Europe it is mostly found around lightly wooded areas and the open countryside. Although this species is not endangered globally, there has been large declines in western European populations. This is thought to be because of modern farming practices with the increased use of herbicides. In the wild, these birds feed on grains, fruits, seeds, nuts, flowers and small invertebrates. And on this diet, they can reach a maximum size of around 14 centimeters long. This makes them around 10% smaller than the closely related house sparrow. The Asian tree sparrow has been introduced into many countries outside of its native range. It hasn't always become established, possibly due to competition with the house sparrow. These birds were thought to be introduced into the Philippines by Spanish colonizers, and the Eurasian tree sparrow quickly adapted. It had very little natural presence predators in the Philippines and could easily nest in trees and buildings. Today they are one of the most widespread birds in the Philippines and many people are shocked to learn that it is not native. The Philippines is one of the largest producers of rice in the world and these sparrows are more than happy to feed on this rice. This has led to their nickname in some areas being the winged rat, but personally I think it's a lot more charming than a rat. Although they compete with native birds and can have an impact on rice production, most people don't see them as a problem anymore as they've been around for so long. So even though it's technically invasive, it's more like a resident 
abundant nowadays. But for our next species, we'll be heading to the freshwaters of Central America, as we have the jaguar cichlid. The species can be found in a wide range of freshwater habitats, from murky lakes to clearer streams and ponds. It shows a preference towards warmer water, and in these waters it is a predator. In their native range, they generally feed on smaller fish and aquatic invertebrates. Males are generally a little larger than females, and can reach a maximum size of around 35 centimeters long. This fish's interesting patterns make it a popular aquarium fish, and that's thought to be the main reason why they are found in the Philippines today. It is not clear when the first introduction was, but they were either thought to be escaped pond fish, or escaped or released aquarium fish. As the jaguar cichlid is a predatory species, it can have a huge impact on the ecosystem. As they're so aggressive and territorial, they can displace and feed on native fish. Over the years, this species has had a huge impact on the fishing economy, but surprisingly it's not the worst offender. The Philippines has a real problem with invasive fish, with suckermouth catfish, snakeheads, and tilapia being the main offenders. I've already included many of these fish in my videos before, so that's why I haven't chosen them in this one. Although the jaguar cichlid is not very popular with commercial fishermen, it has proven popular with sport fishermen, as they prove to be relatively easy to catch, and are eaten in many locations around the country. But although it's pretty and fun to catch, it does have a massive negative impact on the ecosystem. But for our next species, we'll be heading to East Africa and Southeast Asia, as we have the yellow crazy ant. This ant is called crazy because of the erratic movements it makes when disturbed. Although they only reach around 4 to 5 millimeters long, they are one of the largest invasive ant species in the world. They are known for being very aggressive feeders, generally targeting grain, seeds, arthropods and decaying matter, but have also been known to attack and dismember invertebrates, such as land crabs, earthworms and insects. The queen ant needs a very protein rich diet, and the worker ants need carbohydrates to keep their energy. A lot of these workers get their carbohydrates from plant nectar and honeydew producing insects, and these insects are normally aphids. It's thought that these ants were accidentally introduced into the Philippines, with shipments of food and goods. Today, this species has invaded many non-native ecosystems, and can have a negative effect on the native species. Crazy ants prey on and interfere in the reproduction of reptiles, birds and mammals, and also harm beneficial insects. They are known to easily displace the native ants, causing their numbers to plummet. As they have such a broad diet, it's easy for them to survive in many different habitats, which is just one of the reasons why they're such a problem today. These ants are also invasive over other parts of Southeast Asia, as well as Australia and Christmas Island. This has made them one of the worst invasive species in the world, and they are definitely one of the worst invasive ants. But that's about it for this video. If you have a location you want me to cover in the next video, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.